How you doing guys? Another video for you. This is an interview with Eagle 2, Mr. Matt O'Neill. That's me. The backbone of the operation down here for Fair Patriot, the one that shoulders yep. all the massive yep. weight. Lots of logistical things. Lots of logistical things. things. Social mm -hmm. media. Yep. Um, so come up interview with him. CFO. CFO. Interview with him, just going over his path, uh, where he is in the company, and maybe a little bit more about the company you guys may not know. Coming yep. right at you. All right, guys, so this is Matt O'Neill. Howdy. Eagle 2. That's me. Introduce yourself. What do you do? Who are you? Who's Matt? Yeah, who's Matt? Uh, let's see. I am, uh, I got another Instagram handle. I'm Trophy Dad, man. Yes, if you want to bu <laughs> bug the fuck out of him, message him, DM him about getting some, some of those lovely snacks sold because he's making some amazing things with his harvest dry freeze dryer. Yeah, we and got some got some cool tasty. stuff in in right now. But uh, no, the trophy dad is uh, kind of comes from uh, consider my wife. I'm a well kept man, you know. Keep mm -hmm. my wife say uh, the sugar mama. Nice. And then uh, like I said, I got one son. His name's Sam, and uh, just spend as much time with him, running his ass around everywhere. Yeah, if you, and, if you uh, ever look at his Instagram, like he, he, like the amount of the amount of videos and effort that's put into <clears throat> kind of. Chronicling Sam's path himself yeah. is pretty fucking impressive. Yeah, so that that's kind of the whole point of his uh, his Instagram feed is just to kind of you can see his his body of work as he uh, yeah. grows up, man. He's a uh, he's 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 passionate, man. He's on fire for he plays baseball. He's uh, primarily a catcher and uh, he's really into it. But you know, generally lifting already heavy weights, sit well above his body weight. Yeah, I was um, I was in the gym on Friday night. Teaching, with them. teaching Max how to deadlift. Shit yes. Like that. So, um, um, so what do you do for work? I am a physical therapist by trade, and that's how I met Eagle One. We used to uh, work to work together at the same hospital before he kind of uh, went down a little bit different path into law enforcement, and then he got his hooks in me to to drag me down the the martial path. Got it. So, yeah. So as as far as my martial path, you know, it's it's literally where a lot of folks uh, have started. It's probably going to start with James Yeager, mm -hmm. who uh, you know, tapped into a part of Patrick, who got him kind of on fire and motivated, who kind of drug me back into it, you know. Right. And then uh, just kind of through the process, it's like, you know, we need to spread this word and we need to bring it to, to other folks, you know what I mean? So so back up a bit so like so as a kid were you into firearms at all like 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 the interesting part is you? uh i'm originally from delaware so it that's like one of the bluest states you can find like <laughs> they don't even count them in like federal elections because they know it's gonna go you know 97 no percent yeah. blue you know what i mean and so um but i do remember my dad was a civil war reenactor okay so like we had exposure to firearms and stuff you know through that and digging he would actually uh um, you know, have us dig the lead out of the freaking hill and then they'd remelt it and recast cool. bullets and shit. Um, so, and then my older brother, he got into, uh, you know, hunting and things of mm -hmm. that nature. And so firearms were, were always in the house, you know, right. um, and then, but not like heavily pursued, okay. that sort of thing. And then, um, it, it's the general, uh, path of the, uh, what we call it the uh shit what's the uh, no the 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 life cycle of a gun dude or whatever oh, you know what yes I mean? so uh, patrick will tell you i'm i'm into to gear and stuff like that you know so i don't know i started out i wanted to be long range sniper type of shit you know what i mean mm -hmm. kind of always into into movies like that uh i mean i remember as a kid like going to the movie theater and not even fucking going to the movies, just stepping quarter after quarter into that uh, that police trainer game, mm -hmm. and just fucking blasting oh, yeah. targets on that. So I've always kind of had an interest and stuff. But then once I finally got out of school, uh, got a real job, had real money, that's where the gear mm -hmm. shit happened, right? Which happens to all of us. So, and then um, yeah, probably bought a fuck ton of rifles and stuff like that, and you know, gradually. Patrick kind of got me in the in the right direction 
um, you know, whittling stuff down, whittling mm-hmm. the collection down. And, you know, as I say, you know, uh, in the mind of the beginner, there's many options, yeah. but in the mind of the master, there's few, yep. you know, so literally I've probably had, I'm not as bad as Jody, the weapons junkie. There's nothing as bad as Jody. But at like, one point in even... time, I've probably, uh, you know, at least 20 rifles have passed go through my collection. Right. And now I'm down to three or four. Right. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of the general, you know, just come from a really blue state, uh, publicly uh, educated, uh, you know, went to the University of Delaware. Um, but everything really started like after, you know, meeting Patrick and right. getting my own money to buy shit. So, so Patrick, you, you met him before he went into law enforcement? Yeah, so he's, he's a, uh, I'm a physical therapist. He was a physical therapist assistant. Right. Um, and then we, hit it off and we used to spend a lot of time at lunch times we had pretty you know uh, good chunks of time to go outside and exercise so, so where i worked there's a almost a half mile track that i right. could hit most days you know what i mean so we'd be out there just talking you know and and one thing led to another and uh then he kind of got a uh got a little bit stale in the job i think and then wanted to pursue something with a little bit more adrenaline mm-hmm. so then he got into law enforcement, law enforcement and then he uh he figured out it didn't pay very well, and then he had another child coming along, and so then he got back into right. home health stuff and kind of backed out of the, as I recall it. Yeah, out of it's, it's probably a good move. I mean, yeah. the reality is, I, oh, yeah. I don't know how you can be a cop. Right? I, I mean, I, I, I applaud anyone that's able to do it, but like, I don't know how you be a cop. Right now. Yeah, it gets it gets hard where folks, it's just everything so people can't do their job, you know what I mean? Yeah. So everything's on camera, everything's out and, and about, and, five seconds you yeah. know what i mean if you make the wrong one wrong move yep and, every, and, and there's there's people that exist that that are just out there to to burn people down yeah you know what i mean and they will stop at nothing 100%. to burn them down so as you guys so so you guys met you were friends he kind of pulled you into the marshall lifestyle marshall pep what was your first class first class let's see uh um, not including not including carry permit shit like yeah first. yeah so uh literally um went behind the ears Went to tactical response for the way of the pistol. Five days in a row. That's a fire hose. Yeah. So that was uh, that was a fighting pistol, advanced fighting pistol, and then a little bit of uh, force on force stuff. Right. So, yeah, like, and I was that guy, you know, I man. I took a freaking compensated Glock. I'm gonna tell myself, I took a compensated Glock to fucking uh, uh, to fighting pistol. And it, it wasn't really the it, Glock didn't malfunction, but I ended up having a squib squib round. Ooh. And that goes very first day, and uh, luckily I bought a, uh, a MFP shield, right? Uh, 2.0, I think, uh, as a backup gun, mm-hmm. and I ended up running that almost all, all class. So I got I got really good at magazine changes. But I you was did at six or seven, and everybody <laughs> else is picking fifteen or whatever, you know. So yeah, I yeah. So tactical response way of the pistol that was uh, a, a a a big revolution for me. I believe it. Um, Things were a little bit different that weekend because there was a bunch of rain that came in. Um, so I think they did the, the mindset lecture first, and then we did nothing but class after that. Oh, okay. Versus, I think uh, they get the usual class to get folks not, uh, yeah. shooting pretty quick and then come back and do the mindset lecture. Yeah, mindset second day. My, mindset usually second day for about three hours. So, or so, so. Um, unfortunately, like you know, I'm not the strongest personality, right? So like initially, James was really intimidating to me. Right, so I, I didn't, I didn't hear a lot that he had yeah. to say, because it's like, okay, it's, you know what I mean, and, yeah. and I was just trying to be the round hole and the round peg and fucking get through that class without, mm-hmm. you know, being that guy, shooting myself, shooting somebody else, yeah. getting dead, you know what I mean, or getting yeah. nastily. Yeah. So, yeah, James, when I, the first time I ever met James, I, I had been communicating online for a long time, like through the lives or whatever. Um, that was probably two years, year and a half, two years, whatever. Always making excuses why I couldn't make it down. There's always a reason why I couldn't do it. Um, and then I finally just said, like, I'm doing this. Like, you know, and I, and I wanted to go to Camden. I could have gone to PA because PA classes are in Anvil and they're two hours from my home. But like, there was like, and plus it was SOE too, was another reason to go down. Um, but fuck, like, first time at James, I get out of my car and he's like, yo, dude. And I was like, hey, and he's like, hey. You wanted to shoot that pistol, right? Yeah, the canic, right? I said, yeah. He said, let's go jump in the truck. And like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, so back to the 
uh, the squib round in the mm -hmm. Glock, right? So basically, uh, the projectile was still in the barrel. It expanded the barrel. Mm -hmm. and that fucker was locked up. I remember, I think Lewis was there. Uh, definitely Jerry and um, T uh, Tim and Jay were all there. I can't remember who it was, but they are just fucking beating on it on like a table in the back. But, mm -hmm. you know, eventually, we, we ended up at, uh, I think it was a Good Wings eating, and James was there. And we got to talking about it. He's like, do you ha have it with you? He's in the truck. I was like, yeah. So he's out there fucking with it in the parking lot of Good Wings. He's like, you mind if I take it to the shop? Mm -hmm. and, and so I think it was that night we're sitting at, we're in the team room, hanging on the couch, watching some movie like Red Dawn or something. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, like, blinking eye, there he is. And he's like, throws the gun back to me in part. She's like, um, he says, oh, it's, it, it's fixed now. He said, oh, by the way, that gun's uh, way over lubricated. And he's like, I got a video about that. You should watch it. <laughs> so I was like, okay. But like everybody else is in. And, and he proceeded to sit there and hang out and yeah. talk to us for 45 minutes. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the one, day, one day he came down after, I think it was the second time I was there, and he apologized to me. For not having any time to spend, yeah. Like, like he's got like he had a private class going on at the time with Matt Dorito from Pop Evil. Like he had all this shit going on, and he comes out there to apologize to me, yeah, because he hadn't had a chance yeah. to hang out at yeah. all. It was. And, and for you guys out there that uh, I'm sure you're wanting to know what the ammo was, I'm not going to tell you because I want you to comment in Max's video. Yeah, and then we'll we'll fill you in. And right. Yeah, we, whatever the ammo, the ammo company, whatever details we leave out, we're, we're going to do it for a purpose, right. so that you end up commenting in this video. And, and, by, and by the way, like make sure you put all your Glock tape below too, you know, if if you have the opportunity, please yeah. do so. So, yeah. So that so that was your first class fire hose, right mm -hmm. up the mouth, taking it deep, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And then so so you guys decided. At that point, had you already decided you were going to start? Oh, company, yeah, we were already or... teaching classes. Okay. Uh, so that was, uh, we, we basically started in 2019. Okay. And so our our evolution was, as I recall, um, was to teach a class that, that people need information that they needed about concealed carry that they didn't get in the regular Joe Blow concealed carry class, at least here in North Carolina. Right. And so that class was called uh, Next Steps. Mm -hmm. So, and it was basically... You know, uh, what makes a quality belt, what makes quality holster, how do you conceal, what do you wear, and then we got into to draw and shooting, reholstering, mm. stuff like that. You know, relatively static, no feet moving or anything at that point. Right. Um, and so then it was the, the next year, Jerry, uh, well, we all started it together, but Jerry was already teaching concealed carry classes. Right. But he was teaching one of the better ones in the area. So we had already partnered up. And it took us a while to to get Jerry to stop teaching like basic classes, mm -hmm. you know. And so then the next year we just meld the two together, and we end up calling it comprehensive concealed carry. So you get all the legal bullshit that you need to know, and then uh, you're tested pretty quick. And then the rest of the day is the the carrying pragmatic information that you need to know. All the stuff I already listed. Right. Um, that nobody else teaches, it's especially. And then on the range, originally the class uh, was slated for 150 rounds, but then we had the uh, ammo crunch of 2020 or yes. whatever, and so we, we tapered it down to 100 rounds. And but people still get, to the best of my knowledge, you know, three times the practice on the range. They get all kinds of dry practice right. at the classroom, and then they're probably in and out of the holster 40 to 50 times, shoot about 70 rounds here on the range. And then, then we leave them 30 rounds for the state qualification. Right. And then they, they draw in and out of the holster for the, the qualifying stuff. So um, that's that class. And I mean, and then you guys broadened out. I mean, you've got, yeah, so, you've got your, 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 your comprehensive care, pistol one, pistol two. Yeah, so prepared pistol one and uh, two were definitely born on the ride home from tactical response from the way of the pistol. We were already right. teaching classes. And then, um, you know, gathering more information to inspire other classes. Right. And so that's, uh, let's say we want comprehensive carry, uh, prepared pistol one. Uh, originally had a one, two, and three, because uh, everything was a one day format, thinking, you know, just marketing and trying to get people one day classes and, right. and things of that nature. But what we found out is like, you know, if you took the one day format, they were coming back and you were spending so much time to remediate people. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, because they they 
in one ear out the other or they were drinking information by a fire hose and never really got solidified motor patterns stuff like that right. and, and so we're starting so a lot of our stuff's gone to two-day classes now so um prepared to pistol two is now a is a uh, combination of our previous pistol two and pistol three mm -hmm. so it's two-day class and well, even I said that when when you guys did the medical, like when I, I took the first medical class that that you guys offered, and like that could have easily been a two day class, even, yeah. even with just the information that was yeah. there. It, it sure is now, you know. Oh, what I mean? yeah. So medicals and uh, rifles, two day class. Shotgun is still a one day fun class, you know. Right. Um, just something to dangle out there to let mm -hmm. you know, because who doesn't have a shotgun at home? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, now, whether they have the foresight to actually come train with it, that's a whole other, you know, whole other and, question. And fumble fuck with, <laughs> you know, four <laughs> loads and all that shit and stuff that might keep them alive, you know. So, so I guess my question: So we're like, obviously, you know, in case you haven't heard already, but like you, you kind of like, like you own the property where the range is at. Yeah. Um, yeah. You deal with most of the social media stuff. Um, you send out the emails, you know, before and after. Like I got the after me email with the. Uh -huh with all the you know upcoming trainings yeah. and stuff which by the way the well, i haven't taken medical again i think medical i have to take that again but your force on force class is fucking phenomenal yep i mean if you are watching sure this you probably are in some way have trained a tactical response i would assume maybe not but probably um if you've taken the fight you should take what is it called now you changed the name uh, i kind of like never really came up with a name but uh i just dubbed it uh Patriot predicaments, which I love. Patriot predicaments because it's not. So, I mean, it's not. I mean, it's a scenario based yeah. force on force class. So, but like your the scenarios are are up to date and they're equivalent for today. Yeah. And knowing Patrick, he's going to continue to tweak and add and subtract. Yeah. And, and he's sitting on he's sitting on enough that we can <laughs> do a, we can do in a, a right. second class or advanced class. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the cool thing about ours is. Uh, We've got access to an actual uh, house mm -hmm. and things like that. We can do different scenarios there and, um, you know, outside spaces and, and things, you know. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's an all yeah. uh, We're role played for twice. Yeah. It's been phenomenal. Exactly. We've got a great group of uh, role players and everybody kind of knows their job. You know, it takes a shit ton of work to make it happen. It gives Patrick an ulcer every year. <laughs> and then he's always sick for the week afterwards. No joke. Like, yeah. It stresses him out. Like, he's, every, every time he's sick. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's an awesome class. It'll be October, oh man, 20, 21, 22, something, yeah, something like that. Like that. Let me just uh, verify. I'll, I'll find links for that and put it below. I mean, I'll, I'll link the channel. And I should know. Yeah. I just sent out the uh, other email this you morning. So, yeah, okay. 21 and 22. So, if, if, you've take, if you've taken pistol classes and you've taken rifle classes and you have taken whatever else and you haven't taken force on force you're wrong like you do you you may think you know what you're going to do you do not know what you're going to do yeah. and it doesn't mean you're not going to make all you may you may make all the right decisions yeah you may but until you're tested and until understand like with force on force yes we're using some munitions yes you're being shot up but the people that are doing it as role players like we're not there to get that guy like we're there to help you learn yeah you choose your own destiny yeah uh, but you know to be honest with you like anybody that offers a quality uh force on force scenario class you should probably take it because mm -hmm. hopefully all the scenarios are different you know really the the part is 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 inoculating you to stress uh if something happens to you in real life you're already going to be behind eight ball usually it's it's at least two it's predators an ambush yeah it's an ambush they've already got a plan um Maybe you went stupid places doing stupid things with stupid people, and you're already going to be behind an eight ball. So the inoculation process is going to help with your decision making, mm -hmm. and maybe help save your life and, and the life of uh, other ones. So, um, you know, the little marks that you get from the sim rounds, they're just, uh, yeah. I forget how Jody puts it, but, you know, just, just consider it an investment in your future. Yeah. You know, because getting shot to death yeah. in, in force on force is a very very cheap way to learn the lesson yeah yeah so i mean it, it goes back to you know uh colonel boyd and hicks law and all that stuff you know what i mean mm -hmm. the more times you put yourself the faster your decision making process is going to be and your your likelihood of survival if you put yourself in 10 plus dog fights yeah. is going to be way higher yeah yep 
So where do you, like, you, you, here you are where you're at right now. Where do you see yourself going with your path? Like, do you see, like, a direction? Is there, like, trainers that you want to train with? Is there a training that you want to do that you like, have in mind? Uh, sure. I mean, to be honest with you, I've been personally been kind of stagnant for about a year or so. Right. Uh, Modern Samurai's on the list just because um, I don't carry a, a red dot pistol, but we're seeing them more and more and more in classes. So, so the, the better uh, we can understand it, the better we can teach it. Right. So that's already on the list for this year. Um, I would love, uh, you know, most of us in the group want to, uh, to get some actual night vision training mm -hmm. under our belt. And things of that nature and, and then you know, would be awesome to, to be honest with you uh my next move would be more and more medical right right so like i'm already kind of medically oriented but like to me you just can't have enough stress right inoculation and 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 dealing with that sort of thing right i'm probably more likely to use medical than your you gun know, than than my gun and so like i said you know hopefully i can for, for every firearms class, I should probably take two medical classes. Right. No, I agree 100%. I mean, like, we all carry medical on our persons every day because the reality is that you're more likely to roll up in a car crash. Yeah. Or it doesn't have to be anything yeah. as dramatic as that. Like, it yeah. really, like, it... Ask, ask me what the number one uh, item I've used in the last, the last year out of my, you know, my iPad. Right. Number one item for me has been the damn mini ace bandages. Oh yeah, uh, not in mini H H H bandages. Sorry, the pressure bandages. The mini H and H's, and so um, you know, I've had like three different episodes, and and usually it's somebody elderly, right? So like uh, somebody out, somebody fell outside of work, right. and they're bleeding a little bit, so it's easy to apply that, mm -hmm. like get them home and let them patch yeah. themselves up. Uh, I was at a minor league baseball game with somebody. And I walked by this uh, this fella on a little rascal scooter and his elbow, just skin tear. Right. You know what I mean? And so, and then of course, I don't know. I don't know if the baseball facility had a medical staff or it was just somebody at a uh, a marketing like a, one of the local hospital nurses. Mm -hmm. You know, she runs down there with like band aids and stuff like that. I was like, here, use this, mm -hmm. wrap it around. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then. Um, yeah, recently I, I used it again on somebody else's shin. So two falls, one skin tear, but that's been the most popular item right. that I've used out of my my personal kit. I mean, and those little things are awesome. Yeah. They take up no room. That's the other thing too, like people bitch about, you know, what was I do you really care? Like, if you don't want it in your fucking pockets, then put them in your fucking ankle. I mean, like there's no, like I, I'm, I'm so over the excuses and the oh, why I don't and this and that and oh I wear shorts like then fucking wear cargo shorts and put yeah. them in your fucking pocket yeah yeah like, I guess obviously I've used the H&H's mm -hmm. uh, but you know probably the tie for number one are just gloves I keep in my pocket right right because I'm probably not gonna from? where'd I get this from uh, I traded you yeah for this right. SO is this a Rambo pouch from SOE yeah. Yeah, I traded I traded you one of those uh, suture play kits. play suture kits. Yes, yeah, man. Yes, sir. So I got that, and I keep some gloves, and I actually keep a uh, a plastic face shield in here too, in case I gotta I gotta breathe up on somebody. You know what yeah. I mean? So I mean, so the, in in the reality is, look at that. It fits right in his back pocket. It's yeah, like, it's, it's it's soft and comfortable and stuff, yeah. and it's it's always there. So sorry, so, man. I'm gonna get you distracted. No, you're fine. Uh, so so you you kind of know where you're going next. You 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 kind of know what direction you're going. Um, like what's next for the company? Uh, next for the company, well, um, we're, we're trying to pursue some uh, avenues for bigger, better range. So that that's number one, because then we can start to draw in some other folks. Right. You know what I mean? They're, they're content experts in there, um, like dot, like 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 yeah. green line and yeah, yeah. So uh, and, and some of this is I don't know if it's proprietary information or whatever secret information, but you know. Um, Luckily, the neighbors of this property have been really cool because we just yeah. let it rip this weekend, and the police didn't show up. But and, I mean, and, and the range the range is not a huge range, but it worked perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but you know, in my defense, I I know most of the neighbors, right. and they were all well aware. Called the sheriff's department; he can vouch for that. Yeah. Uh, all the mornings, you know. So, I mean, it, it can't really do anything other than trying to 
you know, here in our county, we're supposed to be 500 feet from occupied dwellings. Right. That'd be the only thing they could really, you know, try to give us trouble about. Right. I guess because we're within noise ordinances. Uh, but anyway, uh, maybe hook it up with uh, another place for bigger, better range uh, to be able to expand class offerings, uh, bring some other folks in, and then you know, cultivating other folks within the company right? right getting some other aces into places because um you know i'm getting busier and busier right. with sam getting more and competitive and and, and patrick's, patrick's got kids three are kids. getting older yeah they're going to be into shit um, and the kitchen's i mean the reality is, yeah. is that if you have more people that can step into that place of he's the instructor no 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 different than attack response that, yeah. that the curriculum runs the class yeah so so in full transparency uh we're we're probably going to bring the Patriot Carpenter Scott uh, mm -hmm. in the, into the fold on the instruction side definitely open to to Kish and and, and bring in Ariel in. Oh my God, yeah. uh, maybe do some uh, female specific stuff and then um, I've been trying to bug uh, Jody about being our uh, our brand ambassador he is, he is he is he already is yeah he's we already consider him the, uh, <laughs> the Patriot persuader yes sir and then uh, brand ambassador um tapping into other resources like uh like evan yeah where radio made easy he's he's a tech guy and i mean we've got three or four years worth of email information as far as targeting you know right. students and and so using using valuable information that we already have to to help fill classes and things right. like that um as, as far as like actual class offerings we're we're fairly tapped out unless we were to do like a a low light building clearing at the, the other house that we can use and things like that you know what i mean so i think i think i think a low light class would be fantastic so but uh yeah you know we got radio made easy coming in um you know chuck peoples with uh appalachian, Apple, mountain, appalachian solutions. mountain or medical solutions is, medical is, solutions is is uh in the in the queue to, right. to bring and see if he can't do some special topics for us above and beyond right. our medical class and then, uh, yeah, just go from there, see where, see where it takes so, us. So keep an eye out. I mean, and again, guys, like, if you're watching this, then you more than likely, have, you know, you're somewhat touched by your tactical response, or maybe you just, for whatever reason, you want to watch my shit, which I don't fucking understand, but whatever. Um, check these guys out. Watch the website. Watch the classes. Um, the ones that are already on the books for this year are fantastic. Um their pistol one I have not had a chance to take, but I understand it's a very mindset oriented class, which if you haven't taken a class like that, you should. You learn how to fight with a gun, not shoot a gun. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for him. And obviously all the people he just mentioned are gonna be videos that are they're gonna be dropping and basically, you know, getting my viewers a chance to see what you guys are all about because I think what you have here is special. Like the people are fucking special. Um, and it's it's not it's not a common thing. Like I, I don't think it's it's a rare thing. I think the, right now, um, and I think anyone that's watching this would be well served to, be, to come and be a part of it and to experience it and get a chance to get out here and train with you guys. For sure. All right, guys. Yeah. Thanks for so having me. This is Matt O'Neill again, Eagle Howdy. Two, the, <laughs> the person that has hosted me time and time again in my apartment that's in his basement. At least three or four times. At least three or four times. Um, and I hope you guys are having a good day. I hope it's being productive for you. I hope that you're enjoying it, you're making it, making yourself better with it. And remember, guys, your path is out there. Go find so, it. Thanks, man.